And welcome back to the Meadowlands and the 62nd edition of the Hamiltonian. The field for the first division of the first heat ready to step on the racetrack for the post parade. There's number one, Besieged. And the driver is almost as big a story as the horse. The driver is Ulf Thorson. Oh, I would have to say he's the main attraction, Dave, because first of all, he's the driver that won the Hamiltonian last year aboard Nuclear Cosmos. The Siege draws the rail today with Ulf in the bike. He could be very dangerous, this horse. He was a winner of the division of the Beacon Course Trot at the Meadowlands, taking a lifetime mark of 156 and 1. Followed onto the track by number two, Skywatch Lobel. And the driver is Hawken Walner, who's no stranger to good trotters or long shots, Ellie. Oh, the Scandinavian connection is back. Jan Janssen, uh, the trainer. The, this horse is coming into this race winless this year, racing mostly in the New York Sire Stakes competition. He face, faces a much tougher field of horses today. And number three is Crown's Best with Per Erickson. Crown's Best is a well-traveled colt. In fact, he's been to eight tracks in his last 10 starts. And in those 10 starts, he had eight wins. He has over 200,000 this year made. He's another colt that campaigned mainly in the New York Sire Stakes circuit. He shows a lot of early speed, but he shows some difficulty competing against this group of trotters. And there's number four, Spotlight Lobel. And interestingly enough, this horse is from Team Nordine, and as successful as they've been with trotters, never a Hamiltonian victory. Well, this horse came from last in his previous start to finish second, trotting his mile in 156 and 2. A New Jersey Sire Stakes competitor, he has over 135,000 made this year, but he really has his work cut out for him in here. Number five is Sir Taurus, who's coming out of the back paddock here, and that's Ben Webster in the bike, and Ben took the Hamiltonian three years ago with Historic Freight. And Benny's aboard a good horse right here. He holds the world record for three-year-old trotters on a half-mile track, stopping the clock at 157 and 2 in a New York Sire Stakes race at Yonkers. And incidentally, Dave, he broke Mac Lobel's rec record at that track. He has impressive stats, eight starts, five wins, and three seconds. Well, here is number six, Action Factor, Dave Rankin in the bike, and possibly uh, the biggest question mark in here. Mr. Rankin is certainly a fine horseman. He wouldn't be bringing this horse here if he didn't think he had a shot. Well, he won the open trot last week at Vernon Downs in 58-3, and three, but he draws post six, and against this competition, it's a definite disadvantage. Alan, I've got to go on shots very soon. And talking about competition, here is the one they're all afraid of. It's Mac Lobel, and the most interesting thing about this is that John Campbell, the number one guy in our sport, has said this is the best horse he's ever driven. Well, this horse is undefeated this year, four for four, put on a positively outrageous performance in last week's Beacon Course Trot, equaling the all-age track record for trotters at the Meadowlands in 154 flat. He established a season's record for three-year-old trotting colt winners of the Yonkers trot at that time he set a world's record the list goes on and on and on Dave how are they going to beat him well we don't know but there are seven in this race we're back at the Meadowlands let's take a quick check of the odds as these seven trotters get ready to come to the gate Besieged is at 8 to 1, Skywatch Lobel 50, Crown's Best at 16, Spotlight Lobel 18, Sir Taurus is the second choice at 5 to 1, Action Factor is 45, and Mac Lobel 1 to 5. You put up 5 to win 1, you get 6 back. Stan, what are the roots of this race? Actually, they go back to 3rd Avenue, New York. 140 years ago, it had McAdam stripped down the center for wagons, and road horses raced on the side. A banker had a fast trotting mare. She ran off, got crippled. He gave her to a butcher. The butcher sold her for $135, and she produced Hamiltonian, the father of the breed. And these fine horses, led by Mac Lobel, ready to try and join the illustrious group of 61 other Hamiltonian winners. A beautiful afternoon. It's hot and sultry. The stakes record for the Hamiltonian, 154 and 3. The world record might be in danger, 153 and 2. We go to the top of the stands, and the man who will call the racing action for you this afternoon, here's Tom Durkin. And here they come for the first division of the first heat of the Hamiltonian, and uh, they're off. And Mac Lobel is out quickly for the lead from the outside, and Sir Torres is moving with him early, and Besieged is out fast toward the rail. Crown's best has come away fourth, and he angles toward the inside. Skywatch Lobel has come away trotting in fifth position. Then far the back, it's Action Factor, and on the inside, Spotlight Lobel. The field rounds the first turn, and it's Sir Taurus who's up for the lead. 
Mac Lobel was three wide in the early going, and John Campbell's looking for the lead with him now, and the opening quarter was quick, 27 and four, and they move into the back stretch, and Mac Lobel powers up to take the lead now. Sir Torres is back to second, and Besieged is in hand at this point. He's third on the inside, with Crown's Best racing first over. Skywatch Lobel is now fifth toward the rail. Spotlight Lobel is racing sixth. Action Factor is the trailer as Mac Lobel dictates the pace as they move over to the half mile. Coming after him now is Crown's Best. Here's the half. 56 and 1. And the field heads for the far turn in the first division. And it is Mac Lobel leading the way. Crown's best to pressure him from the outside. Just in behind them, Sir Torres is racing in third position. Spotlight Lobel has moved to within three lengths of the lead. Besieged to save every bit of ground. He's just three and a half lengths off the lead of Mac Lobel, who's coming to three quarters with a two length lead. But here comes Spotlight Lobel with a three wide sweep as they turn for home. Sir Torres is just in behind them. Besieged comes off the rail and he's making his move now. The three quarter mark was 126 flat and it's Mac Lobel, the leader at the top of the stretch by a length and a half. John Campbell driving him confidently with an eighth of a mile to come. Spotlight Lobel is full out to try to get him. Then farther back, Besieged is racing third. On the inside, Sir Torres is fourth. Mac Lobel impressive here and he's pulling away with the field with complete authority. Mac Lobel has won it by five winding lengths and the time was 154 flat. That is a Hambo record and it ties the track record. A sensational move there by Mac Lobel and he did it with such incredible ease. John Campbell driving him confidently all the way down the lane. He just crushed this field this afternoon in record equaling time. Indeed, it was the fastest Hambo ever. Dave Johnson, back to you. It happened just the way they expected. And sizzling home in one minute and 54 seconds. John Campbell never taking the whip out. Let's watch the stretch drive again as Mac Lobel fulfills his promise here, winning his fifth Number straight seven, victory Mac here Lobel in 1987. Number four. Mac Lobel on the lead as they turned for home on the outside. It's Crown's Best, the three horse with Per Erickson not able to close the gap. Mac Lobel, the quarter in 27 and 4, 56 and 1 for the half, three quarters in 126, and coming home effortlessly in one minute and 54 seconds, a new stakes record for the Hambletonian. We'll be back with more after this brief timeout. We're back and it's official. Mac Lobel pays 220, 220, and 210. Spotlight Lobel, 480 to 10, besieged $2.10 to show, and I'll bet there was a minus show pool on this one. Mac Lobel coming home, the easiest kind of winner. Let's go to Alan Kirschenbaum in the winner's circle. I had a feeling we might be talking to this guy sometime during the show tonight. John Campbell, Mac looked absolutely sensational. Were you pleased with his performance? Yeah, he raced real well. It's a, a tough heat for him when he's got to come back, but he, he did go a real good race. You sent him to the front early, which you had to do really in that field. Did you think you'd have to work real hard to get there? Yeah, I knew there would be a lot of early speed on the inside, and I wasn't surprised they, they went that much, and that it took them that long to make the front. One thing I was a little surprised about was the challenges that came throughout the mile. Crown's best ranged up to put the first moot challenge on you. Did you expect them to come that early? Well, I thought somebody would. Uh, he was unlucky. He just didn't find a hole in the first turn, and he had no uh, alternative but to try and, you know, move up to the front. And... Uh, Anytime you're racing in the Hamilton, you've got to expect challenges. As you turn for home right here, comfortable, it looks as if another challenge might be coming in the horse of Spotlight Lobel. Are you nervous at all here? Does your horse feel just as good as he looks? No, he felt real good. I, I was confident he was going to win uh, at the head of the stretch. He felt real strong. How much do you think is left in the tank for the second heat? Well, I hope we, have to, uh, we don't have to go as much next, next heat. I'd rather go slower and uh, be easier on him in the long run. Congratulations, John. Let's go back to Dave Johnson.